Hey guys, welcome back. The Covenant were one of the biggest threats that humanity had ever faced since the dawn of time. During our 27 year long war, 23 billion human lives were lost at the hands of the grunts, the jackals, the elites, the hunters, the brutes and the drones. However, the Covenant species encountered by humanity during the war were only the tip of the iceberg. Behind the scenes of the Covenant existed the Covenant Fringe, a plethora of Covenant species kept unintentionally secret from humanity. So today, we're going to look at some of the few known details about the Covenant Fringe, along with a few species that very, very few people know exist, that are either confirmed or possible members of the Fringe. Alrighty, so the Covenant Fringe, what actually are they? Considering they weren't encountered by humanity during the war, what did they actually do? Well, most species considered to be a part of the Fringe weren't exactly fit for combat roles, for various reasons. Instead, the benefits they provided to the Covenant were more strategic and infrastructure based than combat based. Now, it's unknown whether these benefits they provided to the Covenant were provided as some sort of deal in which they received something in return, or if they were simply bullied into it by the might of the Covenant's vastly superior military. Given that, similar to the meddlers, the Fringe aren't one species, instead are a collection of many, I'd imagine that each species was almost approached differently by the Covenant. Some of the weaker species were very likely just intimidated into cooperation by the might of the Covenant, whereas the representatives of other, maybe stronger or more intelligent species, may have officially met with the Covenant hierarchs and been offered a place on the Great Journey in exchange for their cooperation and support. Now that, that is one one sales pitch that I'd love to see. I can, I can just imagine some prophets sat around a boardroom table or something pitching a trade deal in which their offering was the chance to transcend onto another plane of existence and become literal gods, whereas the other species were just offering something mundane like fuel for ships or something. Somebody, somebody needs to draw that or turn it into an animation or something. Either way, all we know about the Prophet's relationship with these species is that some were deemed unworthy by the Prophets themselves for trade with the Covenant and salvation within their fleets. After the war and the defeat of the Covenant, however, the state of the galaxy completely changed, and so did the Fringe. Some species begun to emerge from their hiding holes, attempting to profit from the incredibly unstable political landscape of the post-Covenant galaxy. Humanity's renewed efforts in expanding across the stars and growing and evolving humanity also allowed Oni and the UNSC to begin gathering the first pieces of intel on the Fringe species. But it's still early days and the true size and the true nature of the Fringe is still vastly unknown. So yeah, that's pretty much all we know about the Fringe as a collective, but what intel have Oni managed to gather about this mysterious group? Well, the first Fringe species named and revealed were the Yonhet, that weird Star Trek looking ass from Nightfall and Escalation. This species is weird. Even though they were technically in Escalation before they were in Nightfall, to me, they still just look like the product of cheap and bad costume design, but eh, that's just me. Either way, the Yonhet are a species who hail from the moon Yonhei, formerly under control of the Covenant. When first encountered by the Covenant, they were deemed militarily insignificant and their minuscule population meant they had little value in becoming a proper official member of the Covenant. They did, however, have other useful traits that the Covenant could use. They had an unwavering devotion to the Great Journey, which meant that the Hierarchs could pretty much manipulate them as long as the promise of walking the path to the Divine Beyond was still on the table. The Yonhet were also exceptionally skilled at locating foreign artifacts, which, for the very obvious reasons, made them an essential non-lethal member of the Covenant. This is a trait that the Yonhet shared with the Jackals, and actually the two species do share some things in common when it comes to their culture. They both have extreme predisposed tendencies to engage in trade and smuggling for their own profit. However, the Yonhet are seen as significantly more trustworthy than the Jackals, by the elites in particular. After the fall of the Covenant, the Yonhet decided it was time to come out of their hiding and profit from the unstable state of the galaxy. Wartime was far too dangerous for a non-combat species to engage in trade and exploration, but now the galaxy had become relatively peaceful, there was no better time to start raking in the Benjamins. 
these profit-driven creatures often found themselves working for Covenant splinter factions, created in the wake of the Covenant's destruction. Warlords like Julam Dharma look to exploit their inherent ability to sniff out foreign attack and use it in their fight against the humans and also rivaling factions. In February of 2556, humanity got its first destructive glimpse at this collaboration. The Yonhet had discovered a new element on one of the destroyed segments of Alpha Halo, the ring that Chief destroyed at the end of Combat Evolved. They'd then used this element to create a bioweapon, unlike anything that even only top scientists had ever seen before, which was traded with elite terrorists and used on Cedra City to devastating effect. Just because they aren't a combat-worthy species absolutely does not mean that they can't cause some significant damage. However, other Covenant factions treated the Yonhet differently. Some trusted them greatly due to their inherent foreign attack sniffing abilities, whereas others did the opposite and oppressed them, leading to their mistreatment and even in some cases, enslavement by power-hungry elite warlords. And that pretty much sums up the Yonhet. We don't know too much about them, they've only really been in Escalation and Nightfall. They're a weird, but actually pretty useful species, all things considered, that likely help the Covenant and also the Covenant Splinter groups advance their own tech and evolve as a faction greatly on quite a few occasions. But what else is there? Real quick, before we continue, if you're currently reading Halo Envoy, then please stop watching now because the next bit is a big spoiler. The Sharkoi. Now, for anybody who's watched any old Bungie Halo 2 era Vidox, you might recognize these guys. They were originally a species in Marathon, which was Bungie's big game prior to Halo that actually inspired it in quite a lot of ways, and were originally meant to be in Halo CE. Now, in this super, super early build of Combat Evolved, where it was still a third person game and where Chief looked, uh different. <laughs> the Drinol, as they were called back then, were present. They were fully modelled, they were textured, and they were even animated. They were literally just meant to be a recreation of the Driniol, which was their marathon counterpart, but sadly would eventually go on to get cut from the game. However, this was most definitely not the end of them. When Bungie were developing Halo 2, they decided to give the Drinol another shot, this time renaming them to the Sharkoi. But once again, sadly, they were cut. They were, however, included in Conversations from the Universe, which is that lore booklet that we talked about in the last video that came with Halo 2's limited edition. So technically, they were canon, but only very, very loosely. In this booklet, an elite talks about being confused about why humanity's retreat seems so hopelessly random, and then another elite speculates that the Covenant are forcing them back into a perimeter that's smaller than one they may plan to fight in. One so small that soon we may be able to use the Sharkoi. So not only does that confirm that the Sharkoi excel in tight quarters, and I mean, how the hell could they not with those big ass hands, but they're also canon and also a part of the Covenant in some way. However, that booklet came out in fucking 2004, and it would end up being the last time that we'd hear of the Sharkoi in any way, shape or form for a whole 13 years until the release of Halo Envoy, which had one of the fucking biggest and most unexpected surprises that I have ever experienced in not only a book, but a TV show or a game, literally ever. Basically, long story short, a banished brute chieftain was laying siege to a human planet because beneath its surface was a hive of Sharkoi, and he wanted to use these Sharkoi to crush the resistance and control the planet. However, it turns out that to control the Sharkoi, you needed a helmet type thing called the Vertex, which this chieftain had. He then used the Vertex to order the Sharkoi to destroy the human resistance, which was pretty easy for them to do, but eventually the humans managed to disable it, and the governor of the city under siege managed to get control of the Vertex and then control the Sharkoi, kill the chieftain, send them back into their hive, and then, sadly, they dropped a nuke on the hive and killed everything in it. Can I get an F in the comments for my Sharkoi boys, please? An F in the comments. Luckily though, that wasn't the only hive in existence. There are more out there, only confirm that. However, prior to this nuking, it was revealed that the Prophets had originally planned to use the Sharkoi in the Battle of Earth. Now this very likely was a sort of a little reference towards Bungie cutting them from Halo CE and then Halo 2. And obviously in Halo 2, the Battle of Earth happened, so they would have been there. Probably just a little reference to that, but either way, it's, it's canon now, so 
That's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Given their strength and tenacity in battle, two things that only learnt the hard way when they sent some ODSTs in to try and tame a Sharkoi, leading to them all dying, I think it's safe to say that if this fringe species were present in the Battle of Earth, then it would have gone very, very differently. Okay, so given that the Sharkoi were extremely loose cannon for like well over a decade before being properly canonized and sort of hinted at being a part of the Covenant Fringe, I think it's safe to speculate about some other cut Covenant species maybe existing out there in the galaxy somewhere as part of the Covenant Fringe. It, it doesn't hurt. So briefly, let's just run through all of the ones that we know of that Bungie cut from Halo 1 and Halo 2, just so you guys can sort of get an idea as to what might be out there. And and heavy, heavy emphasis on the might. So the first lot of them are a group of cut covenant species from Halo Combat Evolved, revealed by Paul Russell, the literal father of Halo. Now, as you can see, one of these species that we've established is already canon. So maybe whatever the hell the Thorax, the Sniper and the Tank Beast are, they're out there somewhere in the Halo universe existing as part of the Fringe. The rest were revealed by Marcus Leto, Shikai Wang and Robert McLeese in a video about Halo Combat Evolved's cut content that they released in the Halo 2 Limited Edition. We've got the Alien Trooper, which was meant to carry its weapon inside of its stomach and was meant to look like a biped, but not behave like a biped, which is kind of weird. We've got the Keelbug, which was meant to fly into the battlefield, cut up dead bodies into pieces, and then fly off with them to clean up the battlefield, which is certainly an interesting idea, but as Marcus later put it, what was the point? And then finally, we have the Stalker, which was built to be more menacing and monster-like, because apparently none of the Covenant species at that time had managed to fill that role. And that's about it. All of the members of the Covenant Fringe that are either confirmed or also unconfirmed. I highly, highly doubt it, but maybe, just maybe, we'll see a Fringe species getting introduced in Halo Infinite as a way to sort of expand the Covenant species beyond the four or five species that we have now. I mean, hell, maybe that big thing that walked past the tent in the Infinite trailer was a Sharkoi. Who knows? Maybe it could be. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any other mysteries within Halo's universe that you'd like me to cover, then please let me hear it down below in the comments, because I'm loving making this series, quite honestly. In regards to Patreon, the absolutely just overwhelming support over there has meant that each video, the Patreon shoutout section, has been getting increasingly longer. It lasts like a minute now, so to kind of shorten it down, what I'm going to do from now on is, if you pledge, you'll get a verbal shout out in the video after you pledge, and then you'll be on the wall of fame or whatever that's on screen right now for every video after that. I think that's personally the fairest way to do it because still, you're getting a shout out, it's just not a verbal one that's going to last like a minute at the end of every video, but still, I've, I've just got to say a massive thank you to all of you guys who do support me over there, like honestly, the support is overwhelming and I appreciate it so, so much, so thank you guys honestly just so much, and also, thank you so much for watching the video guys, I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.